Uh, hello again. Welcome to a Tuesday episode for Bear Skis Fantasy Football. Um, never really came up with a show name for this, guys. Maybe we should. That might be a good idea. But for now, it's just Bear Ski Fantasy Football. Um, talk about our weekly sit-ems, stardoms, um, how we did, that kind of good stuff. So um, hopefully everybody's uh, you know having a good week in their fantasy weeks. Uh, no losses to report, but um, you know, not everybody's so lucky. So we'll kind of just break it down. I'm not expecting like the longest show every week for this, unless we kind of get sidetracked. But if we kind of just stay on gear, we'll just kind of go through what we got going on and uh, go from there. So, um, fellas, everybody, good? How are we doing? Sure. Good. How are you, man? Not bad. Tuesday. Yeah. Week pretty quick, I guess. I lost in both fantasy leagues. Too. Oh, loser man. and it was Everybody just strange we, this like week. the guys it was strange because the guys i drafted with little expectations like snapped and my top like three draft picks were egregiously bad so Dude, that's yeah. how it goes sometimes ideally yeah, I mean, you what are you gonna with... do it's not like i'm not gonna bench my first three picks in my you know what i mean yeah. like, and you can say sure like maybe you pick the wrong guys but i still have faith they're players who are gonna achieve what they're supposed to this year so like, oh, these feelings are always that? present in week one. It always happens in yeah. week one. You, you, yeah. yeah. Just for example, my work league, like I said, there's always a few people. There's like four or five people who I know watch football consistently, and all five of those people lost. And then like the people who, you know, just literally pick players because their colors match their car, um, you know, they won. <laughs> so I wouldn't, I wouldn't wor- ter- worry too much about it. It's week the one. Fickle bitch that is fantasy. Sure. Yeah. yeah. She's a bitch for sure. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, um, how do we do, do uh, boys? Like, uh, I can kind of break down my side if you guys just kind of want to hear it out and kind of go. You can go first. How, how cool. everything goes. Um, my big money league, My uh, I say big money, but it's for me. Um, Saquon Barkley worked out really well for me. Um, that felt like a good one, and that was my last pick in that round. I was the last pick. I was pick 12 that round, my first overall pick, Saquon. I think that worked out pretty well. Um, Three Kyler times, Murray. Maybe. Yeah, really good. The Kyler Murray, a lot of the guys I suggested, I kind of, you know, I do practice what I preach and end up drafting a lot of the guys that I do mention, and especially in our preseason one, our week one. Um, so Kyler Murray worked out really well. I think it's he's going to have a monster fantasy season just based on that first game. Um, Jer- uh, James Cook worked out pretty okay. Um, DJ Moore was fine. Uh, Kaimi Fairbairn, I drafted him in every league. Mm-hmm. Let's go. I know I know that Houston Texans' offense is going to be just kind of like fickle, but I just see them always being in the red zone at least for like three or something like that. That's kind of where I go with kickers. I just go with guys who the team gets them in the red zone. And, you I know, think the Steelers kicker had six field goals. He did, yeah. So, there's like, that's, picks, I think like that would have been a good pick, too. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot of just big games by kickers yesterday, too, man. Yeah. Just and then like my teams, um, teams, teams weren't getting in the red or in the end zone. You know what I mean? I mean, advanced analytics right now for quarterback play in the NFL um, is kind of embarrassing. I don't know what to attribute it to. I think if I always like to feel out the NFL in terms of like the league and how the trends are going and everything like that. Um, But I think it's a weird NFL at this point in the sense that uh, we watched that Tom Brady interview a few weeks back, me and Pauly. And I don't know if you guys saw that on, I think it's on the, the pivot with Ryan Clark and those other fellas. And, uh, he was just talking about how quarterbacks nowadays, they're all just snap the ball and react kind of players. Oh, yeah. And, um, and there's not much nuance to the game, no checks at the line or, you know, side adjustments, you know, Peyton Manning, you know, doing his little things and stuff like that and just kind of alternating a single route to just change the way that a defense plays. There's not more to that nuance anymore. And, uh, yeah, I think the there was an advanced stat where opening week touchdowns passing um, – in the last like 20 years, it was the lowest year. It was the lowest touchdown total passing for a week one from every single quarterback in the NFL in the last like, 20 years man. or something like that. I believe so it. I think, a lot of a lot of interceptions, man. A yeah. lot of interceptions. Very little quarterbacks this week didn't throw an interception. So it's good good for us, right? Our guy did. Yeah. For Bearski, I mean, when me and Polly do our Wednesday shows and it's always just a little bit more in-depth conversation and nuance and stuff like that, we've talked about how I think the rest of the league just catches up to the quarterback position year to year. Um, and I think I might have to rethink that thought process that instead of the quarterback position or the league catching up athletically, right? Because back in the day you had Ray Lewis and these bulky guys and it was almost how basketball had these positions and football has these 
these positions. Um, I think the rest of it really just comes down to, I think the quarterback position is getting dumbed down rather than the rest of the NFL catching up. So I, I don't know. That's a whole separate conversation. Not so much related, but. I mean, we can talk about it for a second. I mean, you're, that Tom Brady clip, I think I used it in uh, the Windy City End Zones article where sort, Bearski Films is sort of affiliated with it. Great company. But uh, what he was talking about was how the coaching is worse. Like, the, the, the these young quarterbacks in the league aren't learning from actual good coaches. And so they're asked to run slants into a cover two where you don't run slants and they don't know to audible out of that. And that should be the first thing. And sometimes I feel like Bears offensive coordinators in the past are just like, hey, you just run our system. Just do it. And you're supposed to do this. You know? So, well, I can say, yeah. man, I, I think there's a lot more RPO in the NFL today. And that kind of changes the aspect of calling audibles or changing plays at the line. Most of when you hear a quarterback yelling pre-snap is just identifying pressure and coverages. But when they do change plays, when they did change plays at the line, now that a guy can snap the ball and still have a choice, you know what I mean? A lot of the run play stuff that's done post-snap too has changed that, you know what I mean? Like, so... I, like, but just, Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning, like player, I agree with you, David. I agree with Brady. Like, I don't think you're ever gonna see that again. I really don't. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't know how to. I don't know what to attribute that to, to be honest. And it, it, I almost feel like it's unfortunate. It 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 goes away from the football I grew up watching, and I guess I just just old man yells at cloud, you know, opinion of me. <laughs> but like, I just want my football back, kind of thing. Um, but. I don't know. I don't. I don't know I mean, where, where you're going to see five thousand yard passers anymore. Or if that's even possible. But I guess that makes it for better football and more even talent distribution across the league. But I don't know if that's necessarily something I, I want to watch. I think we might see some five thousand. I think that might start to trend in a better direction, man. I don't know. It's just this off, modern games. day offense is just pass, pass, pass. You know what I mean? The teams that, although I'll say the teams that run the ball efficiently, are usually the teams there at the end, man. For sure. Like you can say all you want about this five spread shotgun offense that everybody's trying to run, you know, this West Coast stuff, but you still need a running. You still like the Bears found out real quick. If you don't establish the run, <laughs> you're in trouble, yeah. man. There was that there was there was an obnoxious commercial uh with that kid at the bus stop where they're like, Oh, it's with championships. I don't know if you guys remember this one. He goes like, actually, and he was like a nerdlinger kind of kid character, and he was like uh, the last uh, t- 16 Super Bowls, 10 of them were top 10 defenses. So at the end of the day, defense does still win championships. But that's a whole separate thing from fantasy. Um, sure. Keeping it going on the fantasy side, some of my negatives of my team, like kind of those were uh, the first we opened up with some I told you so's. This one is the big hard wrong. I drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. in all my leagues. Um, what a wet fart that was. Um DK Metcalf, not off to a great start. I still have confidence that that's going to pick itself up. Brandon, I'm sure you do too. But um, not worried about and that. Then, and then for a game where there was offense everywhere, Dalton Kincaid, dude, where the hell are you, man? Tight ends this in general this week, man. You guys, yeah. it's like Travis yeah. Kelsey, Evan Ingram, um, Dalton Kincaid. There was like three more. I don't remember who else, man. Sam um, Laporta. Uh, Laporta, yeah. Hey, man, they LaPorta got eight points. Considering other tight end performances, that was good. Top ten tight ends that just didn't get it done. This, I think finished with single-digit points in fantasy, so in I expect that. And then yeah. if you didn't have Isaiah Likely on your team, you felt like an asshole this weekend because that's going to be a trend, I think. <sighs> Listen but, up. I had Mark Andrews in at least two leagues, so I felt like a super asshole. <laughs> Andrews is still going to be involved in that offense, but Likely is going to be a – a showtime player i think there man i've been rooting for him for yeah. two years I yeah that's the, one, that's the guy that uh we keep talking him what king cage should be he's gonna be yeah. that that slot receiver uh, he got a 96 grade or no i'm sorry 90 grade and in, in pass catching receiving and an 89 and pop pass blocking he was pff's offensive player of the week on a losing team what a stud like so yeah, and I, I saw a man- stat somewhere, man. If he was wearing white shoes, he probably scores a touchdown. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, for sure, dude. And I said to my buddy like a few years ago when Ryan Poles traded Roquan Smith to this team, like, man, I would have taken a third and likely over a second. That kid's a stud. But uh, yeah, man, for sure. Don't don't feel too bad, David. I've got some pretty quality names on my team that just didn't show up. Let's go through that. You guys got any I told you so's? Uh, hit me with your I told you so's. How, how right were you? 
Brandon, would you like to go first? Um, are you talking about in general for the players on our respective teams? I would say just kind of what we did. It's I, I always think of the Jordan Belfort guys. Like, don't judge me on my on my winners. Judge me on my losers because I have so few of them. You know, like give me your give me your good guys. What'd you do good on? And guys you were well, preaching drafted. with at the beginning of the year, and they they followed right. through. For me, yeah, guys, Jaden okay. Reed. Oh, go go on. It's cool. I love Jaden Reed. That's a great because like yeah. Michigan State's my team. I love I love Jaden Reed. I was telling my buddy who is a Packers fan. Like, I everything about saying this kills me, man. But they got themselves a steal when he was drafted, dude. Like without a doubt. I mean, yeah, sorry, go ahead, man. That's that's a player that not a lot of he went he went semi high in drafts, right? In your mm. guys' drafts. I was available to me at like 11, 11, 12. So. Wow, that's really? cool. Oh, he went higher in our draft. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, was picking him high. in like the sixth or seventh, but I also mark him as a sleeper. So I had four drafts, okay? So I got him in at least two two leagues, and then in the fourth one, um, I was about to pick him in the sixth. I was like I think I can wait because he could have waited in other, like I just knew I could wait because I haven't classified as a sleeper a little bit. And so I didn't draft a wide receiver in that draft until the sixth round. And I picked up Zay flowers first. And then I picked up Jaden Reed in the eighth and it worked out for me. I looked super smart because Jaden Reed performed so well. Um, and I scored 149 points in that league. So that was cool. Yeah, and Jaden Reed was a big percentage of it, you know? So yeah. You got one more, Richie, you've been kind of preaching on off season that kind of followed through. Oh man, just, um, I knew Aaron Jones was going to be good and he, w he wasn't drafted very high. Uh, I mean, he performed well. It's, I, I can't like start chanting his praises too loud right now, but he's sure. going to be this consistent. Like he scored like around 17 points. I forget if it was 16.5 or 18.5. I think it's going to be like that all season. So nice. uh, yeah. Brandon, any uh, any guys you want to kind of follow up on, preaching? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, man, a lot of the guys who I drafted to Mike, well, especially on this channel since we've been doing this, David, I don't know that I really drafted too many. I didn't get to get many of the players I've talked about on this show. Mm -hmm. but yeah, there was a couple. I I drafted Joe Mixon. I liked Joe Mixon on that team. I like Chase Brown. I like that. Or, yeah, sorry, I like um just that offense in general. It's widespread. They added talent with Stephon Diggs. They're going to open up the field, man. So Mixon did his thing for sure. There was one of – this league, I actually – my team did well. I just lost. I think I was the third highest scoring team in the league. The team I played was first. My other league, though, man, Stefan Diggs was a guy that, like, a lot of people were – and I love Nico Collins. I had him last year. He's a really good player. A lot of people were writing off Stefan Diggs because he is kind of a headache for teams as an irrelevant player on this offense, and it's like – I, there's no player on this offense that's irrelevant. I don't know if you guys, you know, to um, yeah. whomever thought that, did you watch last year? Noah right. Brown, a, you know, Tank Dell, Nico Collins, yeah. like these guys, he was getting the ball to everybody on the field. So, and Stephon Diggs, we know guys is a good player. So yeah, he kind of went off for me. I mean, he had a, a week that I didn't expect. Like I said, a player that I was drafting where I'm like, I don't know what to expect early in this season, but 21 points. And then, uh, I don't know. I, I drafted Tyreek Hill, and I kept telling people, obviously, between C.D. Lamb and Tyreek, a lot of people are asking me, hey, I'm the second spot or the third spot. Who do I not take? And it was like, dude, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Gotcha. You take Tyreek um, Hill, you take C.D. Lamb, you're going to get it. For sure. Before we move on to, like, what we kind of messed up on, George, please don't leave uh, the watch. We're going to definitely answer your comments. George is in the comments kind of asking us a few great questions. So hang on one second, George. I'm just going to kind of hit you in order of where we're kind of going with the show. Um, give us, like, two, three more minutes, and we'll kind of work our way through. Um, what made you guys feel kind of stupid? Because Marvin Harrison made me feel real dumb. All right. Well, so I, I, have, I have a good one for this. Uh, Brandon, you go first since Rich, Rich, you started the last one. So Brandon, you go first, man. I don't know why I went against everything I've said to myself. This entire off season is like, this is the first year you see decline in Travis Kelsey. And I'm not trying to overreact because Kelsey's going to be a part of that offense, no doubt, but this is going to be the boomer bust Travis, the first boomer bust season from Travis Kelsey. I think we've ever seen where, He's going to do his thing one week and then come close to goose eggs on his next. It seems like no, 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 a graze in better shape. He seemed to be a little more involved in the passing while Kelsey was blocking because like Kelsey is a quality blocker. And then 
I don't know, man. Ray, Rashi Rice, you got Hollywood Brown there. Xavier Worthy is going to be a guy that even if Mahomes isn't finding him, I think they're going to try to force him the ball. They want the ball in his hands. Travis Kelsey's target share is going to be thinner than it ever has, I think. Yeah, I think he, he this is probably a swan song, no? I mean, I would I, imagine. I drafted him fourth year. round. I drafted him fourth round. He had six points. And I don't know that that's not going to be a trend. Dude, I really don't. So, yeah, yeah that's my guy. It made me feel stupid. Gotcha. That's fair. Richie, yeah. give me. Well, um, I felt stupid for not drafting Stefan Diggs because I had faith in him. And every every other fantasy expert and outlet was like, he's old. They have a lot of mouths to feed on that offense. And I, I shot myself in the foot. I had him like a little, maybe one or two names behind DJ Moore at four, first. And then I slid him down a little bit. And I didn't get him in any of my leagues except one, I think. Uh, I had him on the bench. And I just let the outside noise get to me, just get to my normal thought process. That Stefan Diggs is a beast. And... Um, he's a great football player no matter where he goes, even if he's a little bit of a headache and he's going to produce. And he was brought there to be a number one receiver, and they used Misso. And he was just a good player that was brought to a good team. If he was a good player but brought to a bad team, then, you know, be cautious. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have second-guessed Stefan Diggs for sure. Gotcha. All right, boys, that's enough talking about ourselves and how stupid we are. But, um, yeah, let's keep it going. I, I could go with... on forever. <laughs> oh, I, really I mean, I got – Jaden Reed might actually be the only player on that offense that benefits from a backup quarterback and that playing for the Packers. So you got that to look forward to. A lot of people are telling me, like, Jaden Reed's done. Next six weeks is a problem. He's going to – I just got to bench him. I don't think so. I think he's that player they're just going to try to continuously feed the ball because he can make plays after he gets it. I mean, just because the Packers can, like, I mean, I'm not going to get too bad about it, but, like, screw the Packers and whatever. I mean, Jordan Love, even before the injury, guys, he did not look good. Like, I mean, he was – the two touchdowns he had, it was – Jaden Reed gave, got him a 70-yard touchdown pass. Like, somebody asked me, they were like, oh, I missed a, I missed Jordan Love's game, and he had all these stats. Like, if you watched it, you take it's the same way as if uh, Caleb hit that ball to Keelan, Keenan Allen or the other touchdown or the other deep ball. His stats look a lot better. If Jordan Love doesn't get Jaden Reed to run and make two guys miss on a 70-yard touchdown run. The dude's going for 46% and two touchdowns, one pick, right? Like, I, I, do, just... I, do think, I do think Love's going to be a good player, man. I didn't get a chance to watch the Packers-Eagles game. I jumped in at like the last quarter, but uh... – I don't. A lot I, of, I want to. I want to play that Packers team with Jordan Love because I don't want. I don't want any the Bears beating this team and then hearing from like, oh, you, we didn't have our guy. You know what I mean? I want see. This is very this is where, of you. Yeah, this is where me and Polly disagree constantly. If I was in a Western rodeo and they go like, draw, draw on three, three, two. I'm the guy who shoots on two. I don't give a shit about the honor of beating Jordan Love. I want them zero and sixteen, <laughs> and I'm. I want to be sixteen and zero. Screw yeah, your I honor. Think I want a- them to waste a year of their lives. I think they're going to beat, man. They, that season might be over for sure. Jordan Love, six weeks is too much. It's too much. Malik Willis is not a good player. Brandon, you have an honorable approach to it, and I respect it, and that's cool and all, but I just hope we beat the piss out of the Packers, whoever's at quarterback. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, boys, uh, let's do this question real quick, and it'll kind of transition us into waiver wire pickups. I think that's maybe where we start first. So, uh, George, thanks for waiting. Hopefully you're still here. Uh, hey, guys, should I use my waiver one priority for any of these players, Bucky Irving or Tank Bigsby? If so, who should I drop, Trey Benson or Blake Corum? Anybody got a – Yo, I have never looked at Bucky Irving or Tank Bigsby right now. I, I think Blake Corm's a drop candidate because he didn't get a single carry uh, on Sunday. Um, but I'm just going to take a look at that a little bit as we're going here. So just to give you a better answer to your question. Yeah. Um, so he said non-PPR, by the way. So to answer okay. that additionally. The only guy I would say is I would not necessarily – I didn't look at the, the Cardinals' depth chart, but the simple fact that he's the backup behind uh, – uh, help me out, guys, uh, running back. Uh, Connor. John, James, James Connor. Connor. James Connor, thank you. Um, the offensive coordinator from Arizona came out the other day, and he was like, J- James Connor's our bell cow back. Um, James Connor's also not ever finished a season, ever. Um, yeah, so, so you, depending- you know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, depend, so. depending on how, you know, Arizona Arizona's offense does look pretty crispy. And even if it is not a non-PPR league, um, I think you should ride maybe keep Trey Benson 
drop Blake Corum if you feel the need to pick up one of those guys. Um, I just think that rookie rookie legs on a good offense are usually pretty good. Um, Blake Corum was never even that good at Michigan behind one of the greatest offensive lines, you know, in college football last year. And the Rams are a well-oiled machine that I don't know. It's just like, which one do you prefer? I guess um, I would trust that you're going to have more production out of a guy like James Connors backup rather than Kyron Williams, because depending on who I you think, you know go with, yeah, it's it's kind of a crapshoot. Yeah. But go for it, guys. Well, I think Blake Corum will remain a spellback. I don't see any inch. I mean, Kyron Williams finished the season really strong. They clearly want to get him involved. Lucky Irving might finish the season as the starter. I don't like Rashad White really in any way. I don't know. I just, there's nothing special about him. Irving looks like he's got some explosion to him. So I, I don't know. I, I could see, I read an article today. Of, it was from a, I don't know, it was, I think it was Tampa Bay writer, but that there's a chance Irving could end up being the more, the higher snap player on that offense than Rashad White. So. Yeah, I think Bigsby just avoid bad White offenses. Catches the ball. It's a non PPR league, so like, if Bucky right. ends up being a pure downhill running back, they can use versus like, get the ball, catch the ball at backfield PPR. You probably just want to go with that that bell cow. Yeah, and we're talking about waiver wire pickups. I think George might be the guy who does that stuff week one. Who just to make a, you make a move just to make a move. Um, I thought about making some moves, and the only move I did was. Um, uh, I, I'm just rem- forgetting names right now. I guess it's not my day for names, but uh, uh, Baltimore's backup running back who not a lot of people had. Justice Hill. Justice Hill, just because clearly Chris Henry or uh, Derek Henry uh, is not going to be, even they said it today, John Harbaugh made a comment. Jo- uh, Derek Henry is not getting 30, yard, uh, 30 carries a game. He's going to be cool. a, a, a timeshare kind of, belt, you know, running back. So, Justice Hill, especially if he's in shotgun with Lamar, doing RPOs, doing little flare screens and stuff like that. I mean, that's maybe one guy you can look at. But I would say that if these are the guys you're looking at, George, uh, you probably Justice Hill's probably gone in your league. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe um, you might be you might be jumping the gun making any moves here. But Rich, well, exactly. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for George here. None of these guys have to be in his starting lineup. These should all be players on your bench for guard. I'm mean, your bench in a, you're dropping a bench for a bench, right? <laughs> That's what, what I'm saying. What, I think, I think what you're, might be jumping the gun. What you're looking at is usage here. Like, Bucking Irving and Tank Bigsby, they just happen to be used much more week one than the, the latter two that you mentioned, Trey Benson or Blake Corum. And that doesn't mean that they're better players than Trey Benson or Blake Corum. If Blake Corum actually gets some carries – um, you know, I would expect him to do well. You kind of want to research and see if there's a reason that Blake Corm's being like, do the coaches not like him? Is there negative news on him in training camp? And personally, uh, I didn't watch any film on Bucky Irving or Tank Bigsby, so I, I can't give a definitive answer. They put up some nice stats, some like high uh, yards per carry, you know, that looks good. And they both got one got nine carries. The other got 13 carries. Bucky Irving got um, 13, I believe, and Tank got nine. So they're being used and that's cool. So, but again, Echoing what these guys said, don't make a knee-jerk judgment if you really think Trey Benson's a better uh, running back, and um, if hopefully you're not putting these guys in your starting lineup. So, yeah. um, George is we're just gonna let George kind of hijack the show right now because he's actually interacting in the chat a lot. So I'm just it's gonna cool. give you a few more answers. I love that. I like interaction, George. Thanks for interacting at all and watching. Um, notice we're Bears fans. We should be worried. Should we be worried about DJ Moore's performance this weekend? Moving on. My personal opinion. After watching this week, um, I'm more confident in a DJ Moore. I think Keenan Allen's looking slow. He's got the heel injury. Rome is hurt. And if you're starting wide receivers, even though DJ Moore didn't come out fully healthy, your starting wide receivers are DJ Moore, Tyler Scott, and God forbid, Bayless Jones Jr. Um, I would expect a very Justin Fields type situation season going on and him just staring down DJ Moore every week. I don't, I don't think. George, that you should be worried about any Bears player that you weren't worried about before the season started. I mean, if you liked Caleb Williams and you drafted him, you liked DJ Moore, you liked Keenan Allen, nothing about week one really implicates anything on the further success of those guys. So if you wherever you thought DJ Moore was valued, that still worries value. 
the Bears offense is going to start. I mean, these guys are going to start to make plays. These guys in fantasy are going to start to have an impact. DJ Moore is going to be DJ Moore for sure. So yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't and, worry about any of your players after week one too much, man. But DJ Moore is probably a must start player every week. Yeah. Pretty and much. DJ Moore did some nice things on Sunday. And so I'm, I'm not worried about him. It's just, it's a brand new offense, brand new coordinator, a lot of new players, and things take some time to gel. That it would be a knee-jerk reaction to sit them, to like cut them immediately. You said moving on. Yeah, you no, don't want to move on from concerned. him. Maybe, oh. maybe concerned until the offense starts to gel a little bit better. Um, you know, if you have three better wide receivers on your team, then maybe you could you could sit him for a week or two until the offense gels. But he's going to be back to form, and you know, I don't know I, if I, it sounds like right, man. If David's right, I don't think we're gonna. I don't think Keenan Allen's going to miss any time, but Rome might. I, I read an article today that said he probably won't, but I think he will. But DJ Moore just becomes a higher value player for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then just to give him a heads up, George, uh, George, I, I, we'll just finish up with George's comments. He knows it was a bad matchup because of Snead. Um, the matchups aren't getting much easier in the next three weeks. Well, and it so, wasn't a bit. I, I, the yeah. DJ Moore was was beating Snead as well. Exactly. Just, Caleb didn't get the ball there. Man. Yeah, we talked about this in the preseason. I mean, there's no – DJ Moore never gets overwhelmed by top flight corners. It's never an over. He doesn't just get absolutely shut down. He's not one of those players. He's going to win some. He might lose some, but he'll get his during a game. Even on a bad game, DJ Moore's getting four to five catches probably. No, and he's just he's just textbook route running, man. He's going to get separation in a game exactly. against whoever is defending. George gave us some more commentary just on his depth at running back. He's fine, by the way. That it was definitely uh, George was definitely uh, going a little deep on the. Um, on the bench yeah, there, it, it he's, he's got Jordan. Think, he's got he's got Jordan Mason. He's got Jalen Wright, Brian Robinson, Javante Williams. All oh, yeah, four of those should be starters. Jalen Wright, over. man, I did draft Jalen Wright, and I was preaching about him. And now it oh, looks like both guys, Miami backs are going to be out. Is it? I'm reading it. A chain and uh, most are missed practice today, and it doesn't look good. So <laughs> wow. Jalen Wright might already be on the field. And you got Barkley. Yeah, you're you're okay for starters, man. George, you don't got to make <laughs> moves yet, dude. You're gonna because then you're just gonna replace him right back in week three when. Yeah, to be honest, this is a good out. thing, George. Don't take any offense to it. You never want to have to plug any of those guys into your lineup unless you've got a disastrous bye week coming up, man. Yeah. <laughs> With all the running backs um, you just listed it, ahead of them. Here's what I gotta say: If you really, if you watch Bucky Irving and Tanks Bigsby, and you really, really love them, and you don't want to miss out on them, I would drop Blake Corum. Yeah, the eye test. There you go. Yeah. There, there's your Corum. answer. Yeah, there's your answer. Um, yeah, appreciate you, George. Um, Isaac's got a good question. Isaac, would you trade CMC for Hill and Ayuk? He has Kyron and Pacheco, Pittman and London. Yes. Yeah, if you well, I don't know if you're happy with your running backs, you could trade CMC. I'd trade CMC for Hill straight up, like that, <laughs> for sure. Um, also, it just depends time. on your running back depth, I suppose. You know, because your I, starting receivers aren't terrible, but they're not great. Yeah, so but you're gonna, spotty. You're gonna get it you're, if you're getting Ayuk and Hill. Yeah, you're, you're, you're getting that's a both net positive. Those players, yeah. yeah, you're. It's a net positive, like, and you can start three receivers minimum every week. So. Yeah. A guy in my league actually traded CMC last year for Hill straight up. Yeah, and he goes, it's not a bad he came trade. to me, he comes to this me, he's a... like, hey, man, you think this will get vetoed? And I was like, why the hell would that get vetoed? You're trading the best receiver in football for the best running back, like, in terms of fantasy. Like, I don't know why, why would anybody veto that trade? Sometimes fantasy leagues are just assholes. Yeah. Just really quick, this is non-PPR. That does influence me a little bit because I, I believe in a strong running back core for non-PPR for standard scoring. He's not um, saying anywhere it's non-PPR. Um, Georgie, yeah, no, I'm this pretty is sure Isaac. he did. This is Isaac. Not this is George, oh, Isaac, I'm yeah. sorry, man. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then BCP boys, thank you for coming in. Bear down. Do not overreact to week one. I don't think any of us are actually overreacting. If anything, we're, we're all three of us are definitely in the uh, we'll be fine camp. Uh, you got a victory, one and zero. I don't care how it happens. I don't love it, but I don't I don't care. So, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I'm 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 still have faith in my team <laughs> for sure. For sure. All right, boys. Um, working our way through. I think we can. We've definitely 
avoided any of our topics. I, I would say personally, we can start with waiver wire pickups and kind of work our way back. Um, so for uh, anybody who would like to start, I think we're all kind of ready to go. So anybody got Rich, anything go to suggest? First of all, I didn't see this coming, but it makes total sense. Alan Lazard. All right. Nine targets on Sunday. Alan Rogers, best, best, BFF from uh, Green Bay days, and uh, he has faith in him, and I uh, tracked him when he was uh, being drafted, you know. He's a big size speed prospect. He's not the fastest, but he still has enough speed to be dangerous. Think like Brandon Marshall fast, so he's going to be slower later in his career, but he's still fast enough to be dangerous, and he's six foot six, and you can't teach that. So Alan Lazard, um, that's exciting, and I'm looking forward to trying to add him to pretty much all my teams probably. I think it's a really good call, yeah. and also just – with Garrett Wilson being the only one there, Rogers is a bit of a, a slave for uh, consistency and kind of his, you know, what he's comfortable with. So it's kind mm-hmm. of why he brings his offensive coordinators everywhere and his linemen everywhere and all that stuff. So I think that's a good call. Brandon, you got anybody? Yeah, I'd say unless you're in a 16 team league, this guy's absolutely available. And I don't think this week was just a fluke. I think he's going to be, it's going to be a good season for him. He finished last year is one of the best and he finished top 10 overall in in the position that's baker mayfield man if that guy's available in your league and you don't (laughs) like your insurance at quarterback you don't let your jordan love just went down for you that's if you're that guy baker mayfield is throwing on a really high powered offense with a really lot of talented players i said last week jalen mcmillan was a rookie that i liked and he's already caught a touchdown on a team with chris godwin and Mike Evans. So, yeah, I, I think the pieces are there for Baker to just keep blowing it up. And I like this um, Bucks team to win this division. Everybody and their mother chose this Falcons team after Kirk Cousins <coughs> got traded to, got to the Falcons, <laughs> but or signed right. with the Falcons. <coughs> but, yeah, I like this Buccaneers team a lot. I had them winning this division. I had them winning at least 10 games this year. I think that's an easy one to see in how the NFC South is shaking up. I, I don't take any stock in what the saints did against Carolina. Cause we'll no. get to that later, but yeah. man, Carolina, I feel, I almost feel borderline bad, but not really. It's the NFL. Who cares? <laughs> um, you guys went a little bit deeper than I did. I, I feel a little dumb now, but um, justice Hill, like I mentioned, he was available in one of my leagues. Um, and then he was top ad in my second league. So he was the first priority waiver. So he was, he was available, but I didn't have top priority. Um, Justice Hill, man. I mean, I, I think Derrick Henry just blinded everybody to what uh, Baltimore was going to be doing and kind of changing their whole system and their scheme and just giving Derrick Henry like 20 carries and avoiding Lamar Jackson. After week one, I maybe Lamar Jackson was playing a little bit balls to the wall and playing it like a playoff game. And that's why you didn't see much of Derrick Henry and you go back to it. But I think Baltimore kind of showed their colors where the way they play is the way they play. It's going to be RPO, shotgun Lamar, him – choosing to tuck it and run, or he's going to be doing a dump off. And Derrick Henry is not that player at all. Um, Derrick Henry, additionally, I can't foresee him lasting very long this season with the guard play in Baltimore. They'll be fine long-term, but Derrick Henry's always been a guy who needs like a full head of steam, running some outside zones, getting to the edge, picking up speed. And then he starts making some open field misses. The guy in the trenches has always been a little, iffy inconsistent when he has got to run through some bad guard play so i think justice hill is going to be rb1 in that place for a few weeks consistently um over derrick henry so if you can get justice hill somehow some way i think you're getting a higher rb1 than the rb1 that was probably drafted like top five in your yeah. league right in terms right. Of running backs i think justin hill though, or justice hill though, would have to be receiving touchdowns because if they're inside i'm going to say the, the 10 yard line man I don't see him being on the field, but sure. But yeah, he's he had a great game against the Chiefs team, and Chris Jones for sure disrupted the the running anywhere up the middle for <laughs> that ended quick. So yeah, he was yeah. impactful. And man, Justice Hill and Isaiah Likely both look like they're going to be high use players for the remainder of the season for sure. And honestly, even going into next year, if you drafted or can get Justice Hill in some sort of keeper league that lets you keep free agent acquisitions or anything like that. Justice Hill might be a better long-term option than Derrick Henry because Derrick Henry is probably going to be a pretty long-in-the-tooth guy, 31, 32 years old next year if you're going long-term stuff. One more honorable mention on that pickup stuff, kind of what you said, Brandon. He was available in both my leagues as well, shockingly, because pretty high-value high, high value guy. Matt Stafford, man, 
Um, after seeing what they're doing in LA, if you can get Baker or Matt Stafford, I think you're replacing a starter with a starter or you're taking a bench guy that you might've overpicked or drafted a little too early somewhere. Um, Matt Stafford's probably, as long as he's he's healthy, man, he's going to be top five every week, probably. Yeah, I agree. Stafford looked great, man. That's the, that's the other team to me, man, the Buccaneers, the Packers, and them finished the best over the yeah. course of last se- the last eight weeks of last season. The Rams were just doing it on a different level, man. That's what got them in the playoffs. I made a few off. predictions about these teams, man. That I, I, two, a, a few that I had that were just nailed on, but a few that were way off. I was way off on the Rams. I thought they were going to be pretty bad. Um, yeah. New Orleans, still to be seen, but I thought New Orleans was going to look awful this year. No, yeah, I don't think they're good, man. I don't think yeah. they're good. <laughs> I yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm going to stick to that one, hopefully. Um, and then the one I'm the most proud of is what the hell were people thinking, thinking the Bengals are a Super Bowl contender? No, I don't know. I, thought, I mean, I think the Bengals, though, man, and I, I'm with you, man, because, like, well, I watched the game. I watched a little bit of the game, and I thought I thought you could see, visibly see injury on that wrist, though, but I could, it just didn't look the same. But I'm going to oh. say this, man. That team always starts so poorly. Like, the year they won the Super Bowl or went to the Super Bowl and lost, they started 0-3, and, and Higgins was out, and Chase was kind of, bullshit in the entire offseason he was never with the team so i don't i don't want to i'm with you there man they're concerning me because they lost to a really bad not just that they lost but they lost to a really bad football team for sure but, I, I mean a t- i mean i think the this week alone the Bengals probably lost a lot of people they're like survivor pools and stuff i would say a majority oh, for sure oh they destroyed like majority Jammers. Yeah, they destroyed sports betting this week without a doubt. And, and, and to be honest, though, Brandon, like I'm, I'm going to push back on that Bengals thing a little no, bit just because sure. I'm so hard on it. First of all, if you look at some of these behind-the-scenes clips of Cincinnati, Joe Burrow couldn't lift his water bottle. He had to <laughs> reach over with the right yeah, wrist and then reach over with the injury. left. Yeah. But no, like in the game, when you were saying it, he's he's visibly – when you said it's visible, he's walking around going like this mid-game, 20 throws yeah. in. Like the guy cannot – feel his fingers and that was one of those things I, re- I read where they're worried about nerve nerve sensibility in his in the tips of yeah. his fingers for his the rest injury of was like president yeah and then he's going around picking up water bottles and then you know i get it that they're slow that's not something to hang your hat on we start slow all the time but then we pick ourselves up later in the season once in a no, while you just won't good. you're and, just not gonna and it's a bad thing to do when you're in the best division in football <laughs> exactly <laughs> sure. and then on yeah. the third hand it's like i am quite confident jamar chase will be traded at this point. Yeah, I don't know where they, they got to get that figured out, dude. If you're going to do that, they need to do that now. Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, the Packers were probably the prime trade candidate at that point in the mid-season or early I'm season. I'm thinking now, man, I'm thinking a team that could do something. I was thinking about this today, actually, after we talked about Chase. I'm thinking now that the Falcons would do something, like a first two first-rounders. Oh, Falcons that team. sounds like the most foolish Falcons. Movie. I know. That's a great and call. I, I, they, they, they <laughs> think they're, they, I think they think they're in a position to win a Super Bowl, like now. And they, we, they probably think if there's the piece we can get that can finish this thing. But I don't think in, they are. Like, I think inter, they're a bad football team. Interdivision is always rare, but I feel like the two best landing spots for him are interdivision in Pittsburgh and in uh, Baltimore. Yeah, Pittsburgh could use one for sure. They failed on the IU thing. You know, maybe Washington takes a second stab at like a guy with Jamar Chase um, when they failed in that. And then I think Baltimore, it would just be like a hand and glove fit. I mean, if they yeah, were the last, willing to do the, that. So the last team that I think makes the most sense is Buffalo. Yeah, that's a great call, too. I think they'd have to give up one of their young guys, too, and some draft capital, which they kind of always tend to risk anyway. A um, couple more questions that we got. Love the chats, man. This is great. I love having interactive stuff. But um, And then we'll get to like our sit before we go to our start We got, uh, what do you all think if I could get in a trade if I packaged T and Ford? So T Higgins, I'm guessing. Uh, and Jerome Ford. Ford. Jerome Ford. Um, I, I called him Jerome like an idiot. It's Jerome. I'm just being Yeah, Jerome, Jerome Ford. Um, I think it's a good package if somebody's willing to take it for you. Maybe somebody who's desperate early season because you're kind of looking at it that Jerome Ford is going to be useless towards the midway season, right? Midway part of the season. We're talking Jerome Ford, the starter in Cleveland. If I'm not yeah. yeah, yeah. So we got to know we got to know your position and need. Man, yeah, guess. exactly. What could you package for? I mean, it depends on who you can get and uh, who's desperate. So 
Just yeah, answering what you could that. get in return for those two players is probably something decent, but it depends upon what a tight end you're going to get a better guy, a wide receiver running back you're going to get a lesser guy. For we'll put it this way: you're trading a, a wide receiver three, wide receiver two, and an RB two currently. That's going to turn into an RB three. If you feel like you can get an RB one and a wide receiver one, somebody's willing to take it, package it, or something that you could feel like would pay off long term. Like take somebody who's had a down week, get you know, get Puka Nakua now that he's hurt or something like that, and then have him play, pay off for you long term. Uh, get Marvin Harrison because he's off to a slow start. Roman Dunes, like yeah. those are all upgrades, but that's like you, you that's you manipulating the stocks kind of thing. So um, yeah, depends on what you're trying to do. Ford is definitely an own early guy, and then try to sell low, man. I, or he's high. gonna be, yeah. yeah, he's not gonna have much value by come week eight. So it depends right. on how far ahead you're thinking and how far you're looking into like the stock market kind of thing of, of fantasy football. And then I can I, speak to that. If, yeah, go for the, it. The forward question. So just face value, the equal value for those who is a reliable wide receiver three or reliable running back three. But the, the thing is, is that swindles happen in fantasy all the time. You're trying to get an advantageous trade. So hopefully you can get better than that. And that's what you're driving for. But I wouldn't settle for less than an RB, a reliable RB three or reliable wide receiver three. Somebody who's the team's know. like consistent I don't know. I starter. Agree. I don't know. I agree with Dave. I think you sh- your standards should be a little higher because I agree with Dave. You, I think you nailed it. I think T is a wide receiver three on a fantasy team, and I think Ford's a running back two. While you while while this while he's starting for that team for sure. My main point is that he tries to get better than what I stated. That he tries to leverage a trade, try to yeah. find a sucker, basically. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Um. So who do I start this week in a full PPR? A chain, uh, Robinson Jr., Kyron Williams. Um. I would, I full PPR. That, I don't know that A chain's gonna play. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so you might have it's been definitely between any, Robinson and Kyron. It's definitely between Robinson and Kyron. Um, the way that Arizona's defense looked in the second half, you're probably better off with Kyron. Um, however, against the Giants right now, I mean, the Giants look really bad. Um, I don't know. I didn't watch much Washington football, boys. Um, I don't know how you guys feel. Does, was Jaden – a check down guy was he a deep shot guy was oh, check down. his two his two lead receivers were austin Eckler and brian robinson okay so i didn't i didn't see much of that so that's a good tip there it, my gut would probably lean towards robinson just because the cardinals i think are a sneaky good team um i think against the giants and i'm a big person on this when you know that the other team is giving you a lot of three and outs it's just a pure numbers game at that point when you're getting three and outs time of possession is huge Right, like t- most of Tennessee's players were a better fantasy option than the Bears, not because necessarily they were a better offense, but because they had plus eleven minutes on time pe- on time possession, and they were all three and outs. So, if you had a few, when did the Bears players start to pick up some steam in terms of fantasy? When they stayed on the field, five, six, seven, eight plays. That's just kind of your standard. The Giants are going to be three and out left and right. Um, Dan Quinn is a defensive guy, super simple defense, but it's a super simple offense he's playing against. Um, my gut would say Robinson, and that's kind of where I'll leave it. Yeah, Brian Brian Robinson last year in his two games against the Giants. Um, the first one I think yeah, the first game I believe he left injured because he played very little. The the second time he played him though, he had seven runs or seventeen runs for seventy five yards, and seven receptions for sixty yards on nine targets. So, you say uh, only? That sounds like a great fantasy week to no. me. <laughs> well, yeah. No, no. I thought, yeah, for sure. He tore the Giants up. Well, he was at least leaned upon in that game. So I'd maybe look. And when you guys have things like that, because that is a close call, Kieran and Robinson, start diving into the matchups. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And even if, even if A-Chain was healthy, I'd still sit him. Ky- Kyron played yeah. the Cardinals twice last year. They're in the same division. Robinson's played the Giants twice. You know I mean? You can go back and look at that stuff. Yeah, and just to totally spell it out, A-Chain, um, this is t- for Dan Ilbai. Um, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, A-Chain has a knee injury, and they have other running backs to use, and the game on Thursday is going to be in the rain outside. So I, if I were a coach, I don't want to mess up A-Chain even more. So that's why we're saying that. And I think Kieran Williams over Robinson, if you're looking for just one guy, if you're looking for two out of three, then Kieran Williams and Robinson are obviously the better choice. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's a short week. Uh, usually these Thursday yeah. nighters are st- – Stinkers. We were talking about week one being like 
hit slam your unders on your bets. It's actually quite a high point total in a lot of these games, more than oh. I was expecting in week oh. one. But these Thursday nighters are always like 10 7, 13 7. Dan, maybe this will help you out. Last year, Kyron Williams had two games against the Cardinals, obviously. 20 carries for 160 yards and a touchdown. He played him the very next week again with 16 carries for 145 yards. Ooh. He also caught the ball six times for 60 yards and caught two touchdowns. So I would say Kieran Williams is probably your guy, man. He seems to have success yeah. against that team. I'm pretty big on Kieran, yeah. Yeah, you might have swayed me, Brandon. I'm, I might go with Brandon on that one then. Um, cool. That's some good comments and good questions, guys. Love to answer them. Uh, yeah, thanks for the watching. questions, guys. It's awesome chatting fantasy, man. Feels good to have sure. just anybody watching, and it also just feels good to kind of interact. So, yeah, happy to answer anybody who would love to contribute anything. So, um, yeah, let's move on to – go for it, Richie. I just Sorry. wanted to say, George Play, he said, thank you, guys. I'm new to the channel. Just subscribe. Thanks, bro. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Much thanks appreciated. Um, I'm going to go – let's move on to, like, some sit here. Um, so I have one that's like an honorable mention and, uh, you know, we're just gonna, I think I'm going to start with, uh, just kind of showing off some of the players that we're saying is sit them. Uh, so we're going to start trying to share the screen here. Um, one second, fellas, hold on, hold on. I'm just going to try to keep this as, oh man, I'm really trying to make this quick. Um, here's my player that I am trying to say sit them. And this is this is a big wet fart here, but um, just right there, right there. Just any since any nope, that's it. Carolina Panthers, any <laughs> Carolina Panthers. <laughs> but but DJ Chark, no, he's not on the Panthers anymore. Never mind. No, it's sit, it's, sit it's, any it's any Steven, Carolina Deontay Panthers. Deontay Johnson and uh, Corey, Corey Leggett. That's the receiver, Corey. Xavier yeah, Leggett, but yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there's, I don't know why I keep there's, saying There's nobody on Carolina that you should be starting right now. No, yeah, it's looking ugly there, man. I, I, man, Bryce Young could be benched, guys. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Sorry That's about cool. that. Um, so, yes, uh, Sidhams. This is a little bit more of the disappointing part of it. Uh, but, yeah, uh, unfortunately for me, I'm going to have to go with a guy that, for me, um, I was big on going into the season – Looking at the matchup, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. So uh, Ky- Kyler has kind of leaned towards the veteran receivers. I did watch some film against uh, Marvin Harrison so far. Um, his next week matchup, I had it written down, and I am losing it at the moment. I will give it to you in just one second. Um, not my best day. Sorry, fellas. Um, L.A. Rams. LA Rams had a pretty good defense going on against Detroit. They showed a little bit more than I think anybody expected for them to show on defense. The rookies are already paying off Byron Young and Jared verse. Um, the depth is there. They were really, again, time of possession wise, LA Rams are just kind of performing really well. They're holding on to the ball. They're running the ball, killing the clock. Um, if anything, Arizona is like good, but I think LA is kind of their kryptonite. And Marvin Harrison, if you have a better option, which you should probably, even I took him pretty high. He was either my one wide receiver one or wide receiver two taken. I still have better options just matchup wise in both of my leagues than Marvin Harrison Jr. And with these rookies, uh, I, I think until they prove something and have a better matchup, I think you could probably sit Marvin Harrison Jr. for a while. Marvin Harrison Jr. is actually on my stardoms, but we'll get to the later on why. Uh, I'd love to hear the counterpoint on that. Go <laughs> okay. for go for your hey. sit on that one for now, Brandon. He's on my stardom, and for this reason, man, I, I, I think that Rams defense got substantially better through the draft because they took players like Jared Verse, Braden Fisk. We'll see the, the jury's still out, but they didn't do anything, man, to improve their secondary. And actually, the here's the top five wide receiver win rates by pro football focus. It's A.D. Mitchell, who was Richardson was missing all day. Nico Collins, C.D. Lamb, okay, pretty expected names. Jameson Williams, Khalif Raymond were fourth and fifth on the top highest win rate from receivers. That's the the Lions' number three and four option, really, behind Amon Ra. Actually, probably fourth and fifth. Behind Gibbs, Amon Ra, and Laporta, 
those two guys are probably your fourth and fifth option, and they were beating those guys. And it doesn't even mean they were catching the ball. It means they were separating from these guys. So I think this is the game where Marvin Harrison's going to kind of show who the hell he is. I think I could see Marvin Harrison going off pretty big, man. I don't know that the Cardinals win a game against them. Probably not. But their corners are really bad. The, the L.A.'s corners are concerningly bad for them because I do have them as a playoff team but they're going to get torched against really quality quarterbacks man you might have convinced me the only thing I would say to that is I don't think Buffalo was necessarily demonstrating any depth there in terms of cornerback play either in term, uh, and their young guys and DeMar Hamlin starting at safety and all that stuff and Marvin Harrison I don't know if it's a trust thing or if it's a rookie wall thing but guys that you didn't necessarily expect on the Cardinals to be making plays, they were getting favored and looked to first over uh, over Marvin Harrison. And a few highlights I've seen so far, uh, man, he is not running Chris Browns as much as everybody thought in college. He, I know me and you, Brandon, we both liked Malik, uh, Malik Neighbors a lot more. I was pretty like 1A, 2A, 2B with Marvin Harrison and Rome, and I don't think Rome looked that great either, to be honest. I mean, that could be a whole separate story in and of itself. Um but, yeah, there's something to that. I I guess it's a 50-50 between the two of us, but you, you did convince me a little bit just to maybe start him as wide receiver three if there's not somebody better. But uh, seeing that terrible point total scares the crap out of me from week one. Yeah, there's something to him and him and Kyler clearly need to get figured out. They, they weren't yeah. on the same page. That's got to happen. But I think this is the game that could maybe help that occur because I see these Rams DBs, man, being – 31st, 32nd ranked in the league, somewhere in that neck of the woods, for sure. Right They're bad. Who's your, out of curiosity, just so we can keep the sit going, who is your sit over your stardom? Um, I don't love Nico Collins, guys. And I know I just talked in a positive way about him, but I don't love wide receivers against the Chicago Bears, and I don't love a number two wide receiver against the Chicago Bears. And I do think – Stephon Diggs is going to solidify himself as the number one option over there. Maybe not in yard totals, but in the end zone, in the red zone for sure. But yeah, I think uh, Nico Collins is in trouble. I think Tyreek Stevenson is kind of developing into one of the better corners in the NFL as far as I'm concerned. And I think uh, Jalen Johnson's going to shut down whoever's on his side of the field. He typically doesn't chase players around. He just kind of winds up loose over in front of them. So I think Jalen Johnson is going to shut down Nico Collins. I think Tyreek Stevenson is going to give him trouble too. Tyreek's a big physical corner. I know he had a big week one, and I relied on him last week, man, but or last year, but he did have really kind of up and down, up and down. Tank Dell would be the option one game. Whoever else, you know, I mean, he wasn't always he wasn't always the guy for Stroud. So I don't like receivers against that Bears unit this year, man. Um, I kind of completely agree on that one um their secondary looked good pass rush looked quite good and frankly i think obviously the game was saved by the defense um any any improvement on offense is gonna help that defense this week as well so if they're just just keep it simple something about something about shane waldron gives me a luke gets you stank of just trying to be so <laughs> clever and be in the Smartest guy in the room with these scheme fits. Cole Komet having less snaps than Gerald Everett by almost 10, 26 snaps to Gerald Everett's wow. 34. Um, just something about – I mean, the the if you name the five best players on the Bears offense that we've been all excited about towards uh, the, the first week of the season, Keenan, Rome, DJ, Swift, Komet, they had 10 snaps on the field together that week one. In terms of that foundational package, that was 10 snaps out of, I believe, like 62. Uh, that's just – you're you're outthinking yourself. You're trying to be the smartest guy in the damn room. Stop it. Sometimes it's a game of, like, of just a dude hitting another dude or a dude getting open against another dude. And yeah. anything that that offense does to help is going to help that defense. I'm with you. Tyreek Stevenson had a good game. Okay, in the first half, but second half he solidified and then – Wherever Nico Collins slides around, he's covered by, you know, borderline pro bowlers. And then Jalen Johnson had the best week in, of any corner in all of pro football, graded by PFF. So, um, yeah, Richie, got any sit -ums? 
Uh, Dan Ilbell says replace him with Godwin. Last I saw, Godwin had a good week last week. Um, as a knee-jerk reaction, I would say yes. Um, but I'm sorry. Anyways, sit Basically, the theme this week is if their team sucks, be worried about them. And so I was really concerned about DK Metcalf. Seattle Seahawks offensive line was a piece of garbage. They, they operate like a piece of garbage in week one. And when there's an offensive line like that, you might see a little improvement from one player and another player. It's hard to see them improve as a unit. Okay. And so it, it's still a big hole in Seattle, regardless of them adding Connor Williams at center. And I forget who at uh, another guard position. So they tried to improve their offensive line, but it looked bad. So it's like a cautious sit em. And you can kind of say the same thing about DK Metcalf, Marvin Harrison, and Amari Cooper until you see their team performing better. Only play them if you absolutely have to in like the wide receiver three spot, you know, or the flex spot or whatever. So um, be wary of those guys. So, yeah. Giving it to Daniel Ball. Should I start Chris Godwin this week over Nico Collins? Knee jerk reaction, I would say probably yeah. That ball, that uh, yeah. Buccaneers offense looked a lot crisper. Um, you have much more of a chance in terms of just guys on the field. You're talking about the second option on a Tampa team that had a much better offensive week. Well, not better, I guess. Te- Texans had a great offensive week as well. It's kind of a toss up for me. Um, either of you guys can sway me one way or the other. My gut, just in terms of matchups, it would be probably Chris Godwin over Nico Collins. And Brandon kind of convinced me with the sitems. Well, and yeah, I don't. It, it's Stafford just threw. I mean, that Lions defense improved. There's no doubt about it. But just Stafford just threw 300 yards on that team. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a toss up. We're not being yeah. super helpful for you on that one, but definitely a little bit of. Uh, I don't know. Gut reaction. Just I. I thought Plus, God we're Bears fans, Collins man. We sure. don't want Nico Collins to do well, so we're just kind of leaning towards like <laughs> no, I do, he's going to have a tougher matchup for sure. I do think that May, Mayfield's going to do. I mean, he's he's going to be. It's going to be like a Matt staff. Like we just talked about the two players in tandem. He's going to probably throw a lot of yards for sure. I don't know how much the Buccaneers get in the in the in the end zone. Oh, I see the Lions winning that football game, but I do think Baker has the the ability to tear that team apart. In the secondary, for sure. So, Godwin might go off. I think we're. I mean, we're saying might go off. I think Godwin over Nico Collins clearly. That's what I think. So, yeah. All right. I don't, I don't like was, definitive, uh, I don't like definitively telling anybody like to, to go with your gut, man. But if for if sure, I'm I wrong, think. I'm wrong. I don't yeah. care. I can yeah. still say. I even if Nico Collins outscores Godwin, I'm going to say Godwin was the right choice. Anyways, I don't care. Like it happens. Yeah. No, it's like I said, man. Yeah. This secondary with the Bears. When you guys, when 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 anybody's got fantasy receivers going against this unit, just be aware <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, all right, boys. The juicy bits, uh, or at least the more fun, exciting bits. Um, we got our stardoms. Luckily, I think we all have different stardoms. So oh, I did have one more stardom. Sorry, I'll just oh, go for it. I don't want to go. We don't even have to go oh. too far in depth. Amari Cooper, guys. Amari Cooper is a a player I don't love. Um, the Jaguars' defense is. Not particularly good in the secondary, but Deshaun Watson looks awful. Yeah, I I, I don't. That, that, I that think seems that seems like it's run its course. And at offensive line, he's constantly on his ass, man. Do you guys notice that? Like the dude is just—he's yeah. always on the ground. Whether he, the sacks recorded, he's getting hit. And uh, it's not a bad O line either. So I think there's something to that. Just the the team chemistry around. Yeah, him. they're about there's to play clips. Josh Allen. I don't. So I don't know. Amari Cooper's not a guy I love this week, guys. And it's probably, I, I think probably similar to the joke game. I made about the Panthers right now. Avoid Browns players, man. Jerome Ford, maybe Stardom, but I don't feel great about David and Joku either. I don't feel about Jerry Judy. I don't feel about about uh you know anybody really. So yeah, I'm with you there. All right, boys. Um, I think we all got different Stardoms. So anybody want to go first and play a little highlight clip for you guys? Well. Um, I'm not sure if you have a highlight clip for him. I already mentioned Jaden Reed, superstardom. Um, but uh, I also have Amon Ra. Um, I I don't think that's a big surprise, but I forget who's going against this week. Let me just make sure of this before I say it. Yeah, it's St. Brown. He's going against Tampa Bay, and it's going to be a shootout. And I think just an obvious stardom is going to be Amon Ra, and Jaden Reed for that matter. But yeah. Okay, I'm on route. Um, uh, I think those are just good stardoms in general, and 
Yeah, Jaden Reed. How do you, so, Richie? Just out of curiosity, so you can emphasize Jaden Reed. Do you feel like he's not dependent on the fact of Jordan Love? You think even if it's, I, I know why Brandon thought it, and I don't disagree with Brandon. I think he might be their, you know, their Swiss Army knife or utility knife, but kind of emphasize why Jordan Love not getting hurt might not be necessarily a sit him. No matter what wide receivers around the field, Jaden Reed has made himself available, and he's made him. He's He's just been a beast for them. So it doesn't matter if Christian Watson's out there or Romeo Dobes. He's been – Jaden Reed has been consistent. It doesn't matter who who else on – he's their best wide receiver, I think. Maybe there's someone glaring I'm missing. I don't think I'm missing anyone, all right? And the Packers are still a good – like, if Malik Willis is going to lean on someone, I think it's going to be Jaden Reed. So, yeah. Definitely. He's that Swiss Army knife guy. I mean. Yeah, it's – and he's a, he's um, a Christian Watson – best friend. Yeah, sure. exactly. And and I like Christian Watson. I'm still pretty high on him, but I was hoping he would develop into more. And Jaden Reed was drafted after him. Um, I, he might have been drafted after Dobes, but don't quote me on that. And he just proceeded to prove himself to be the man there in the past two years, in my opinion. So, yeah. You guys are convincing me. I just going into this off into this uh, fantasy draft season, I had honest to God, like he was probably the third receiver I would have mentioned on on uh, green Bay that I would have drafted. I would have gone like Dobbs, Christian Watson, Jaden Reed. So I just, I genuinely didn't really know about him moving into it and seeing the, even a week one, I kind of understood it a little bit better, but now, because again, I don't know. I'm like, man, does this guy need the ball all the time? Is it a, is it a spread the love type thing? Is it, you know, I, I really didn't understand it, but I guess I could see where just him kind of taking some end arounds here, taking a dump off and stuff. But, so, you know, I'm hoping he develops into like Debo Samuel. I'm hope that's what I'm hoping for. So that's, yeah. I, I got a hint of that in week one. So, okay. Yeah. I like it. Cool. Brandon, who is your uh, big stardom for the week? Um, yeah, since I already did Marvin Harrison, I was, I was, I would probably say Terry McLaurin. Um, I know like he's a check down quarterback. We said that after week one, but I believe that he's going to get this figured out just the same as Caleb Williams will. And McLaurin's the best weapon on that offense. I mean, we did see Robinson and Eckelar play a pretty decent game last week. I mean, at least they bailed their young quarterback out. You know, at least the the commanders did what you said, David, the Bears just couldn't do. Like, make it easy, make it simple, and stop overthinking it. But uh, this Giants team is also another team, man. It's just all-around bad football team, but their defense especially is also not very good. So I think McLaurin definitely gets in the end zone in this thing. Very nice. Um, you, Brandon, I think you're going to like this one. I don't know if you've seen it already. Um, I'm already giving it a big stardom for Brian Thomas Jr. Um, yeah. I think he instantly – I think we thought it was going to take a little bit longer than maybe it was – than it already did. Um, but the guy already looks like the number one target. There were some throws that Trevor Lawrence was making that was already just pure chemistry. We're talking about a throw that starts at midfield, ends up towards like the back corner of the end zone. And Brian, Brian Thomas is already running underneath it. Um, pure touch throws, pure anticipation throws. The guys are just on the same page. Usually wide receivers in the NFL, rookie wise, there's almost never the first guy taken ends up being the best guy in the class. And I think we're starting to see maybe a hint of that in terms of just production, rookie of the year kind of ta uh, tallies and statistics. Um, they're also playing the Browns, which normally a Browns defense, I would say kind of avoid it. Um, but uh, I forget who their starting quarterback is that already got their like sixth concussion. He's probably done for the Greg Newsom, is it? Um, or something like that. But we're talking about a thinner secondary uh uh, a Jacksonville team that's kind of well balanced and looked pretty good, all things considered, even in a loss last week against Miami. Um, I think yet again, I, I kind of emphasize this point in terms of fantasy. The Cleveland Browns are just going to not have time of possession. It's going to be a, a, a two to three ratio of terms of time of time of possession. Um, if the Browns are going to be, or if the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be cons consistent or successful against any part of the Browns, it is in the secondary. It's not going to be against the defensive line because they're just so damn good. So uh, Brian Thomas Jr., I think he's just elevated so quickly. As Instead of being that wide receiver four on your team and just kind of being a stash away till they figure out their chemistry, I think you can slide in a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. over a matchup you maybe don't like 
guys that we were already talking about. Like I would be more comfortable starting him over Nico Collins. I'd borderline be comf- more comfortable starting him over like a Keenan Allen or DJ Moore. Borderline, I'm not saying I would, but uh, I'm right there with Brian Thomas Jr. He's the rookie to own for sure. Cool. All right, boys. Um, yeah, I think I'm good there. I mean, you know, unless you got some honorable mentions, I do have one more yeah. honorable mention on the stardom, and that's just for uh, Jonathan Taylor. So Jonathan Taylor, um, I really did like what I saw out of Anthony Richardson by comparison. I think that might have just been like big game, big moment type of thing or kind of a shootout thing. Um, there's something there, though. Uh, Colts offensive line is top tier. Um, Jonathan Taylor's playing the Packers um sunday noon game so i'm sorry yeah sunday noon game um packers i don't know there's just might be something to that defeated mentality that defeated mindset of losing your starting quarterback um teams usually come out of that and either really really step it up and step up for the rookie and take you know or for the new quarterback and kind of help them out or they just kind of get their brains bashed in and just kind of you know whimper especially in that first week after a big big injury so um Jonathan Taylor, I, I seriously doubt you weren't starting him before, but in terms of like matchup stuff against the Packers, you might have not. I think Jonathan Taylor's going to have a big week. Yeah, I also – we talked about it earlier, guys. If you have Ky- Kyron Williams on your team, start him. Cool. Yeah. Um, for me, I have an honorable mention waiver watch, and that's Brandon Cooks. Um, he didn't go drafted in a lot of leagues, and he's the number two wide receiver in Dallas. They got rid of Michael Gallup, so that frees up a lot of targets for him. He's always been a good receiver, like at least good, and um, he's going to get more targets uh, this year than last year. And he was an okay start last year, but he's even better now that Michael Gallup's out, and he's officially wide receiver too. He's a mouth that's going to get fed in Dallas. And there was a week um, last year where he got three touchdowns all of a sudden, to me, Brandon Cooks is just an easy uh, get him, pick him up, and you can just shoot him into your flex if you need to easily. Very nice. All right, guys. Uh, Tuesday, the Bears uh, football coming back in Thursday. Um, hopefully, uh, it's a good week for the Bears and Texans. We will be seeing right, everybody right. next week. Thank you for anybody who tuned in. Appreciate you guys. Go Bears. Uh, yep. On all the feedback today, it was a great feedback show and a lot of comments. So um, we're all kind of in a little bit of a hurry to get off today as well. So um, thank you very much for tuning in and we will be back next week. Oh, and guys find me at four star Chicago sports Monday nights. Thousand percent. Make sure you check out Brandon. Um, Brandon next time, if you want, throw your uh, Twitter handle or anything like that, or your uh, link in the bios as well. So no worries. See you guys next week. Thank you so much.